Thank you very much indeed, Sophie, uh, for inviting me. And that was a very interesting presentation, a very interesting presentation from the, from the Commissioner to start. Um, I am just, I'm a privacy lawyer and, and have been, I have to say now, for over 25 years. I thought that was a terrible watershed when I got to the over as opposed to the nearly, but, but there we go. Um, uh, and I should say that actually I do do some, I feel I should make this declaration, I do do some privacy work for Google uh, uh, and I should declare that, but I'm certainly not here to speak on behalf of Google or indeed to talk about Google, because I think the issues of competition and privacy are a lot bigger than in relation to the internet or in relation to one particular really quite small market. So can I start with, with one question? One of the questions in the invitation was this. How can bad or illegal practices create significant competitive advantages in online markets? Well, for me, this, big, this begs a big question. Bad or illegal practices? There is an interesting relationship, I think, between competition and privacy, but I think that it's a nuanced relationship and requires very precise analysis. I don't think you can simply put the two in one big bucket and slosh them together and, and you know, hope something will come up. So I think we first have to start with this bad or illegal practices. Regulators of any description cannot simply take action based on practices that they do not like. We have fundamental law on data protection and privacy. We have a legal regime to deal with data protection and privacy. If organizations breach those legal standards, there is a role for regulators to act. But there is not a role for regulators to, as it were, take their own view of what they might not like about behaviour in a particular market. Uh, the rule of law is fundamental to our democracy and when making judgments about privacy practices, we have to look at the laws that actually govern those privacy practices. So where do we look? We look in Europe to the Charter of Fundamental Rights and we look to the legislation uh, which, which implements those. And I would also make the point that these are more than consumer rights. Uh, I accept wholly there is a big consumer nexus, but they are not just consumer rights. Um, they are fundamental rights but assert the dignity of every human being. If, for some reason, the laws that we have implemented to put in place standards of data protection are inadequate to deal with a privacy abuse, then the first port of recall, the first port of call must be to address that inadequacy in the regulation of privacy. Now, I do not disagree that there is a relationship with competition law, but the first place must be privacy law. And I think that now is the ideal moment. We have the regulation and the directive going through. If there are regulatory issues that should be addressed, now is the time to debate them. Now is the time to raise them. And I would also say that if there are particular issues in one environment, uh, and the one that, the one that um, has been flagged particularly um, by Pamela um, Jones Harbour has been on the online environment, we need to look carefully at how the rules we might make there or in that sector or just our thinking reflect in other environments. Because there is not just an online world. There is a far bigger world out there. The markets in personal data are massive and they, are, they go far wider than online markets or online behaviour. And in many of these, I would have to say, the impact of, of something going wrong in the market, of a breach of privacy protection, is far more significant than it is necessarily on whether you get some behavioural advertising or not. 
These are all huge markets in which personal data is in some way or another a commodity. And these actually exclude a lot of the areas where privacy is very important. So they exclude policing, they exclude a lot of the powers of the state. Um, and I think what is important about privacy regulation is we must look for consistent regulation across all of these areas. As individuals, we are entitled to protection, the same level of protection in all of these domains. I am entitled to the privacy of my healthcare, my social media, my loyalty card scheme, my insurance, my banking, to the same level, an appropriate level in all of those domains. And competition regulation, it seems to me, is not a substitute for effective data protection regulation. And if we are looking at competition because we think our privacy regulation has somehow failed, then we must address that failure and not try to patch it up by using another <coughs> regulatory domain. So, I said I do think that there is a, a significant relationship, and that is just between competition and privacy. And I will rush through these because I know that time presses and you want the time for the debate. Privacy as a competitive advantage. Now, there is a, a lot of interesting questions around this. Whether a competitive market will drive any privacy-friendly or compliance-friendly um, processes. Well, I would make this, this, this point first of all. Data protection is not one attribute. Privacy is not one attribute. It consists of a raft of interlinked attributes and standards around fairness, transparency, choice, legitimacy, retention, minimization of data, security of transfer, and so on. At best, my view is that the market will only manage to drive little bits of this. Maybe it will drive security. I think that's very possible. Maybe it will drive data minimization in some defined blocks, but it will not drive as a whole our move in Europe towards better um, privacy protection. And I think and I just, with this I have to say I disagree with lots of other people and I know it is one of those mantras that competition will drive improvement in the markets. My view is that while we are enthralled to big data, to the collection of more and more data and the mining of more and more data, it will be very difficult for the market to drive anything other than some of those areas like perhaps retention or perhaps security. I think we are kidding ourselves when we look to the market too much. And I know that in that, Sophie would disagree with me and Pamela would disagree with me, I don't know about Simon, and I know that you know, people I work with at Google disagree with me, but, but that is my view. I have lost count of the number of businesses that I've seen start up over the last 25 years saying this is going to be a differentiated business anyway. I'm oh, sorry. Monopoly providers, I'll be very quick here. Monopoly, first of all, I'd make this point. If something is a breach of data protection rights, it is a breach irrespective of whether it is done by one provider, four providers, 20 providers, or the whole market. And we should be looking at that and addressing it uh, from a regulatory point of view. Now, there are issues around, there are issues around monopoly providers. When I was at the regulator's office, we worked in a situation where our monopoly providers of essential services were all being privatised. They had sets of data that were not available anywhere else in the market. And we took regulatory action against the gas, the water and the electricity companies to restrict their ability to utilise the data they had gathered as monopoly providers um, before they, as they moved into, into a competitive market. I think that's a genuine nexus there between competition and, and privacy regulation, um, but a very unusual one because these were genuine monopolies and genuinely essential services, and there was only one British gas. Level playing fields, are, I think we really must be vigilant. I think there are some areas where privacy regulation has produced playing fields that are not completely level, and that we should actually be looking at the regulatory scheme to say, this is, this is operating in an odd way in the market, 
uh, but time presses, so I will move on very quickly. So just to start with the just to start the impact of the proposed regulation. Um, I would say we should support and applaud this level of harmonisation. We must look for a level playing field as far as we can in the protection of personal data, for consistency between areas, so that we as citizens, as individuals, know what our rights are and where we stand. Uh, and can I just kind of pay tribute <coughs> to the work of uh, Sophia Felt in this area, because I know she has been an absolutely doughty campaigner for consistency of process, consistency of standards, and has spoken about the problems we've got with the directives, the move to have public sector, the, the problems we've still got in the policing area. So I do, you know, as a privacy lawyer, I do really pay tribute to um, Sophie Ann Belt and her work in, in this area. I think it's been fantastic. Um, I think there is, there are things in the regulation that are aimed to try and improve choice, to improve comparability. Those are good things. I think we should, we should work on them, we should aim to improve them. Um, but I still think that it will be a long time before the market really takes us to where we might want to be in privacy protection. So to summarise, there is a relationship. I think it deserves closer study. But we shouldn't conflate the two things. Simply because there is a, a dominant position or a competitive advantage does not mean there is a breach of privacy, and it does not mean that necessarily that competition law is the right tool to use for it. I think we must be a lot more nuanced about how we look at this area. Uh, and I think the challenge now is to ensure that the new regulation uh, gives the tools to do to regulate privacy effectively on a level playing field. And um, as I say, I'll finish by saying how much I admire, uh, and I hope everyone will do the work that Sophie and Phil have done in that area. Thank you very much.